So today we are covering the do's and don'ts of disaster recovery. And my name is Carla Fedrigo. I'm the online marketing manager here at InfraScale. I have all my contact info for you in case there are any questions that come up after the presentation that you didn't get to, to ask. Please do reach out to me. I'd love to chat more. You can also grab a copy of this presentation so you have my contact info in the handout section of the presentation. So in the handouts, you'll see um, a copy of a DRAZ report, and then we're going to talk about that in just a moment. And then I'll also be putting in a copy of this presentation before we end here today. All right, so let's take a look at the agenda. So first, we're going to look at the key trends in disaster recovery today. Um, then we're going to talk about the, the sort of do's and don'ts of disaster recovery, the top five disaster recovery secrets. And then we'll talk a little bit about InfraScale. Now at the bottom here, um, a, a lot of you have asked if you'll receive a copy of this uh, recording in the question tool already. So yes, we are recording this. I am going to share a copy of that with you. You can also see it posted on our website, um, simply at infrascale.com slash webinars. And then if you have questions throughout the presentation, please post those questions into that question tool, and we'll be sure to get to as many as we possibly can today. Now, I also do want to encourage lots of participation and questions today. We are going to do a giveaway at the Q&A at the end. So one of our participants today is going to be winning a free Xbox One. That's what the, our giveaway is going to be. So just all you need to do to be eligible for that is ask lots of relevant and on-topic questions. And that's all you need to do for that. All right, so let's actually start with a poll. I really want to be able to hear from you. So I'm going to launch a poll and give everyone a minute to answer first. Now, this is just a poll asking, uh, asking you to tell me a little bit about your business. And reason being, I want to be able to cater this presentation to you, and I want to be able to give really relevant examples as we go along. So I'd really appreciate your participation in this. If you could uh, please just go ahead and choose one of these four. We've got 70% of you who voted so far, which is great. And we're simply asking, what's your business size? Zero to 10 employees, 10 to 25, 25 to 100, 100 plus. Looks like the high majority is so far in the 100 plus. So that's great uh, feedback. Maybe I'll widen these ranges a little bit next time. And now we have 100% of you who voted. So everyone has voted. Thanks so much for your participation. We have 29% um, in the 0 to 100, 19% in the 100 to 500, 16% 500 to 1,000, 6% 1,000 to 1,500, and then 29% in 1,500 plus. All right, so let me go ahead and close down that poll. Okay, wonderful. So let's see, should be back into the presentation now. I've closed that poll down. And thanks, everyone, for your participation in that. All right, so first we're going to start off with some of the trends in disaster recovery um, and some of the things that are, that are, that are happening today. Now, the problem with disaster recovery is that most businesses are ill-equipped to quickly respond to outages. And when, when we think of DR, I just wanna, want to very clearly um, define what I mean by disaster recovery as a service, because we're going to be talking about that um, quite a bit today. So we're about to get into the current trends that are propelling the growth of DRAZ. So DRAZ is Disaster Recovery as a Service. And at InfraScale, when we refer to DR as a service, we mean the ability to fail over your entire business environment. So not just file and folder backup, but complete push button failover for the entire business environment. Um, and that can be in the case of any type of outage. It doesn't have to just be a natural disaster, but it could be a hardware failure, a software failure, something along those lines. But we really want you to be able to quickly reboot and virtualize all of the servers and applications, um, to be able to keep those end users productive and keep everyone working while the root cause of the outage is fixed. So with that in mind, 
let's take a look at the reality of downtime. So first here on the left, we're looking at the causes of downtime and how it actually comes about. Now, 55% of all downtime is caused from hardware failure. And that's probably not a surprise to anyone on the line. Now, 22% is human error, and then 18% is software failure. So natural disasters really account for only 5% of all downtime. But still, we want to be prepared for both those micro and macro disasters. Now, on the right, you see the pervasiveness of downtime. And just some of these stats that we've found, um, and you see the sources of the research as well. So 91% um, have experienced an outage in the past 24 months. So in the last two years, 91% of this survey had experienced an outage or some downtime, and then 47% experienced an outage this year. So this is really how widespread outages are in organizations. Now, with this in mind, what is this cost of business? Um, and I'm curious, for those of you on the line, how much would it cost you if you were down for 24 hours? You can use the question tool to share if you'd like. I'm very curious to hear, to hear from you guys. Um, and so with that in mind, let's look at the cost per hour of downtime. Now here you see you know, small company, mid-size, large enterprise. No matter the size of the organization, there are going to be significant financial losses for every minute of disruption. And these are some, some calculated averages of the cost per hour. So small companies lost over $8,000 per hour. Mid-sized companies lost over $200,000 per hour. And then large organizations, $600,000 per hour of downtime. And then I see, wow, OK, I see some um, Comments coming through. OK, so Thomas says millions. So 24 hours of downtime would cost the, co the company millions of dollars. Uh, Mike says over a million dollars. Um, Jason says 20K per hour. Uh, let's see. Christopher says um, outages are mission critical. Not as much monetary, but could mean lives are at stake. Wow, Christopher, what type of organization are you with? Um, let's see. And then Kelly says, that doesn't even include penalties. Jerome says 2,000 to 1,000 per hour of downtime. OK, um, maybe 2,000 to 10,000, do, do you mean, per hour of downtime? Um, Jerome said, yeah, and now Jerome says, sorry, meant 10,000, um, depending on time of day. OK, great. Thanks for the feedback. I really appreciate that. OK, um, so let's jump back in here. So um, we've just looked at some of these costs. And thanks for sharing those. It's, it's just great feedback. And really, you, you need to ask yourself, are you willing to take that risk? You know, the millions of dollars that it could cost for, for 24 hours of downtime. And what's even scarier is really the survival rate of businesses that experience significant downtime, because most are going to end up closing their doors. So with that in mind, if if downtime is so crippling to a business, if it's so expensive, if it's so detrimental, why hasn't every single business adopted a DRAV solution? Why doesn't every single business have on-demand failover? Well, what's interesting is we've seen these barriers to on-demand failover. First, of course, 36% um, of those surveyed said it's simply just too expensive. I can't afford it. Um, and then next, 25% surveyed said, uh, I have insufficient IT resources. And then also compatibility and com co just complexity issues were, were the third, were, was the third highest reason um, for not adopting on-demand failover. So that was the third barrier. Now, this survey, with all this data that I'm mentioning, um, it's a survey of 350 companies ranging in size from 100 to 5,000 employees. And this is the, the, the DRAV survey that I mentioned um, early on in the beginning. You can grab a copy of this survey if you want all the rest of the stats and all the details. It's in the handout section um, of the webinar today. OK, so now let's move to sort of look at the traditional DR trade-offs, because 
In addition to those barriers to drought adoption that we just looked at, traditional disaster recovery invariably means that you're, you're going to have trade-offs. So along the bottom here we have cost, and then along the side recovery time, recovery time objective from days to mere seconds. So on one end of the spectrum here, you can utilize tape. We have off-site tape backup. And you know, back in the day, this was really the primary way that we were protecting data, but it was unreliable and it still is. It might be a really cheap option, but it's going to take days to recover. And I love how Kelly says, tape, I hope not. Uh, Kelly, I completely agree with you. <laughs> um, okay, so moving along this spectrum, Okay, then along came cloud backup. It does have a much faster recovery time, but then also increased cost. And then, of course, appliance backup. And this is something that, that does combine the benefits of those previous methods. So, you know, it's faster. You do end up with something that's relatively reliable, affordable, and fast. It's right there in the middle of the spectrum. Um, and a lot a lot of you may be using appliance backup today. Um, and then, of course, along the spectrum, cold site DR, warm site DR, um, hot site DR, on the very far right there, the hot site um, disaster recovery where the primary and secondary backup systems are running simultaneously, so that, that data is mirrored over to the secondary server in real time. While both systems contain identical information, this is really expensive. It's at the far end of the cost scale. So it does have the fastest RTO, but do you have the means to pay for that cost? So enter DRAS Nirvana. Now you see kind of in the, in the top left there. Um, this, is, this is disaster recovery as a service, and this is what you really want affordable on-demand failover. It's the best data protection paradigm that you can pursue with the fewest trade-offs. So not only do you have backup, but you have failover as well. You could fail over on, on the appliance or in the cloud. You can recover to a secondary site in mere minutes or even seconds. So DRAZ is going to let you leverage a backup appliance to really quickly reboot and virtualize the ends and keep all of your users productive. Now, this is, of course, only if you find the right vendor. Can it, can it really deliver on that promise? So let's take a look at how, how DR should really truly be on demand, because the right vendor would support a scenario like this. So in this situation, here are some end users. They're working just normally, unknown to them, is that they're about to experience an unexpected disaster. So there you go, you see the red X's. That symbolizes a disaster right when the servers and applications go down, just right in the midst of an outage. And now, this could happen at any time. It could literally happen in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. But with on-demand failover, it's easy to simply log in from any browser, even on a laptop, tablet, or just grab my smartphone, log into the dashboard. And you can recover an entire environment, virtualize any of the servers that are down, boot and run either on an appliance or in the cloud, and then everyone keeps working. And Kelly says, ideally, the user wouldn't even know that they're working in a DR scenario. That's absolutely correct, Kelly, because within seconds, everything is recovered and virtualized and the users keep working. The whole process can happen in seconds. So just to Kelly's point, the end users would not even realize that anything had happened. And that whole process is exactly how disaster recovery should be, completely on demand. Okay. With that in mind, let's move now to sort of the, the do's and don'ts of DR. And these are, of course, going to be some of the requirements that you want to look for in any type of D DR vendor. Um, so one, you don't want to break the bank. We already saw earlier that the number one barrier to on-demand failover was cost. So we definitely want to talk about that. Um, number two, cloud spillover. And I'm curious, I want to ask, um, use the question tool, is anyone currently utilizing cloud spillover? You could do a simple yes or no um, if you're utilizing cloud spillover now or not. 
three is complete coverage. Four is uh, push button failover. And then five is encrypt your data. Um, so let's jump into some of these. I, I see no, 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 not yet. Um, no, but testing. Yes, but not at my employer. No spillover. Uh, just doing a POC for cloud spillover. No. OK. So those are just some of the in immediate um, responses that I was getting. I see lots of responses still coming back. Um, so let's go ahead and let me get into this and, and get um, and explain through cloud spillover as well, because that is a really important one, I believe. Um, of course, all five are equally important. So first, let's, um, let's talk about uh, don't break the bank. So number one, this is really, um, you know, a do is to find an affordable solution. What we just saw on that scale, on that spectrum, was that, that some DR methods that we looked at can achieve the recovery time that we want, but they're just not achieving the cost that you want. And really, this is why. This is a scenario, um, like you see on the left, that's how most DR solutions are architected. So you have the production site, and it replicates over to the failover site, just like you see here. But then, of course, in the middle there, because of the bandwidth, the people, the software involved, that can all cost up to three times as much to set up a proper DR solution. And then on top of that expense to implement, it's really complex to test and to use. You have those RPO, RTO trade-offs, the trade-offs that we just looked at. And then it's also really vulnerable to hackers because it doesn't have security built in. So what InfraScale delivers to our customers, we deliver on-demand failover, but at the price point of most appliance backup solutions. So you don't break the bank within the process. You can have on-demand failover for the mere cost of backup. And I'll, I'll talk about that um, in a minute. When I talk about InfraScale, I'll kind of get into some of the details of how we keep that cost so low and, and why it's different. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and talk a little bit about cloud spillover. So you do want to find a solution that offers cloud spillover. And what you're seeing on the left here is, um, you know, it's probably a situation that sounds familiar to many of you. Um, you see the old way, more space equals more appliance. What I mean by this is, you, you might buy an appliance, and then as the data grows, you end up filling it up, so you buy another one. Then you buy another appliance, fill that up again, and continue that cycle where really more backup space equals more appliance. So that can become very costly very fast. And like I said, it might sound very familiar to you. This could be uh, the cycle that many of you are in. But what if you could have the last hardware appliance that you'd ever need, just a, a slim rack mount unit, a 1U unit, and you could send that unit 1 terabyte or 100 terabytes. It doesn't matter how much data you send it. Um, this is the new way where more space simply equals more cloud. And this is the InfraScale way where we utilize cloud spillover technology and intelligently spill data over from the device to the cloud. It's all based on policies that you set on the age and the value of your data. So cloud spillover is actually something that Gartner recognized us for in 2015. They wrote about us in their 2015 cool vendor report. We were a cool, vend cool vendor for business continuity and disaster recovery. And, um, and they quoted, they said, InfraScale says when you need more space, get a bigger cloud, not a bigger appliance. So this is really going to save you a lot um, as far as cost. Um, just to, to utilize cloud spillover. And Kelly now says, funny, you list it as the old way, and my employer is just adopting it now. Shake my head. <laughs> so um, that's, yes, it is funny, but Kelly, it sounds like you need to talk to your employer about um, a new way to do things. It's going to save on cost uh, tremendously. So let's move on and, and keep going here. Um, number three. You do want to get a solution that offers complete coverage. So this is because it's increasingly vital to protect all of your data, all your applications, and all of your devices. 
think of how many of us are, are using our tablets and our smartphones to actually grow data and, and work data. This is very critical information. So you want a solution that can back up any device. So this is going to be de desktops, laptops, mobile devices, both physical and virtual servers. And then you also want a solution that can support any operating system. And just as a side note, InfraScale supports more than 100 versions of the most popular operating systems. Um, okay, number three, and of course, not with the operating systems, you see the icons there too, not just Windows, but Linux, Unix, VMware, Hyper-V. So you do want support for everything. Um, you want to be able to deploy in any form. So this could include physical appliances, virtual appliances, agent level backups. You really want any type of form factor available. Um, storage in any cloud. So you do want the flexibility of storing your data in the vendor's cloud, your own private cloud, third-party clouds, um, Amazon Web Services, Windows Azure. So um, you do want that flexibility. And then to recover, recover anything. So um, recovering anything from an entire database server down to mailbox level. So you really do need that type of flexibility. And then um, also boot anywhere. So I mentioned that really briefly on a previous slide, but you do want the ability to boot on the appliance and in the cloud. You need that flexibility. And you need to be able to fail back any systems as well. So of course, once you fail over, you want to be able to fail back as well. Um, question just came through. You mentioned encryption early on. Um, how do you meet PCI compliance slash auditing? So great question. Um, we're, that's in, coming up in just two slides. So we're, we're just getting there next. Um, so just the slide right after this one. So um, let's just quickly talk about, about push button failover. Again, it is really important to be able to cover those micro and macro disasters. So it's really important to be able to protect your business or if you're a reseller to protect your companies, uh, your customers against both these types of outages. So you, you do want the ability to recover from micro disasters using appliance-based failover. So just with simply the push of a button, you can spin up and virtualize VMs with all of your critical business applications from a local appliance. So that way the IT crew can work and fix the source problem. But because the appliance is local, the time that it takes to virtualize those VMs is mere seconds. Um, or then in order to recover from a flood or a natural disaster, you really want that cloud-based virtualization. So again, push button failover to simply spin up VMs in the cloud and let those users access those applications and stay productive during a site-wide disaster. And then you might say, okay, well, how am I going to get my data back on site from the cloud? So a really, really important note is that we move compute to where the data sits. So if you have 500 terabytes of data sitting on the appliance, or if you have 500 terabytes of data in the cloud, we're going to move the VMs and run the VMs where the data is. And that's how we can boot you up in mere seconds or minutes, just no matter how much data you have. So it's a seamless process. Uh, Thomas says, is AIX possible? Yes, Thomas, it is. Okay, um, so let's look at uh, data encryption. So this kind of goes back to the, the question about compliance. Now, our data is encrypted at the source. It's been transferred via a secure connection, and then it's encrypted again in the cloud. Now, we have the utmost security in mind. So data security and privacy is, is really our top priority. Now, rather than other solutions simply taking raw files and sending them, them to the cloud, we're using this military-grade double-blind encryption system to protect data. And really, this is the best practice as compared to other methods that, uh, that other solutions might use. So you want that encryption locally, in transit, and at rest because it's the only way to truly ensure the data is secure. And this grade of security, um, as well as other factors, is going to allow us to enable compliance with HIPAA, PCI, Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, 
at, uh, SSA 16, SAS 70, many other regulations as well, CGIS compliance. Um, so if there are specific uh, compliance requirements that you have, um, let, let me know in that uh, question tool. I'll try to address all the specifics. But essentially, um, yes, we do enable compliance with those uh, regulations. And part of the idea here is, you know, the, the, the whole idea behind this double blind encryption, it's specifically for business data. Again, you don't want to just put your data in raw and encrypt, encrypt it only in the cloud. This approach is going to encrypt the data locally with a key that only you have and the vendor doesn't. And then when the data gets to the data center, it's encrypted again with a key that the vendor has and you don't know. So by having those two separate keys, it dramatically lowers the chances of any attack being successful. Now even if a hacker did get in, they can't decrypt the data because they don't have both keys. So just think of it as similar to a bank deposit box. You need both of the keys to access that data. OK, um, and then um, a question just came through, what about when the data needs to be deleted? So not a problem. Uh, secure multi-pass delete is utilized, and that ensures that data is completely and safely destroyed. OK, I feel like I have definitely talked quite a bit, and you might be sick of, of hearing from me, so I want to hear from you guys again. So I have a second poll, and I'm going to launch that second poll right now. All right, so you should be seeing that pop up momentarily here. So I'll give you all a minute to answer this poll. Um, here I'm simply asking failover DR, which of these is you? So uh, see, A, I can fail over to a second site in under 60 minutes already. B, I wish I could have failover DR, but I just can't afford it. And then C, I don't think I need failover DR. And this actually kind of goes back to those barriers of adoption that we were looking at. Um, you know, especially I'm seeing I'm seeing 68% uh, of you who have who have voted so far uh, are saying I wish I could have failover DR, but I can't afford it. So we're definitely I'm definitely going to get um, get some more specific examples for that because, like I said, the number one do is to get a solution that doesn't break the bank. Um, so you do need an affordable solution. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me go back to the questions. I see um, the poll doesn't address all the issues. Okay, um, no problem. What do you suggest being added to this poll? All right, we've got 61% of you have voted so far. I'll leave it open for just another minute to get a few more people to vote here. Okay, and now I see some of the comments are saying the question should be what percentage can you fail over? Meaning I can fail over operations slash user VDI, for example, but not data stores. I need, uh, and then Mike says I need a solution. It's identified as needed, but not direction. Okay, um, and then the so right now 70% of you who voted. Um, 26% say, I can fail over to a second site in under 60 minutes already. Okay, so you can fail over in under 60 minutes. Can you fail over in under 15 minutes? Yes or no? 65% um, of you said, I wish I had fail over DR but can't afford it. And then we'll talk to that in just one moment. And then 9% said, I don't think I need fail over DR. So I'm also really curious to hear from that 9% of you as to, as to why you don't need failover. Very just curious to hear, just for my own information, what, what your situation might be like. OK, let me go ahead and close the poll down now. We have the majority of you who voted. So again, thank you for your participation there. I appreciate it. All right, and now we'll jump back in. And I want to talk just, just a bit about InfraScale. And our mission is simply to eradicate downtime. It's really simple. We're, 
where a DRAS company were using the cloud to eradicate downtime. So it's a very pretty, you know, it's a very simple mi uh, mission statement. We, we help do this by equipping every company, large or small, with the ability to quickly and affordably recover from any type of disaster, both macro or micro. And of course, we saw earlier, we can't really eradicate the causes of downtime. We'll still have hardware failure, software failure, human error, and those account for the far, far majority of all, of all downtime issues. But really, it's our mission to lessen the pain that you experience and get your users back on their feet when a disaster strikes. And let's take a look at how we do this. So I did mention earlier, um, you know, what if you could buy the last hardware appliance that you'd ever need, just a slim rack mount unit, that you could send one terabyte or that you could send 100 terabytes. So that example was right here, um, our cloud failover appliance. And that example was our, our 1200 series, um, where you can send as many terabytes as needed because you can always spill over to the cloud. So the cost is going to be extremely low in comparison to others that you might be using. Like we saw, why buy an appliance, fill it up just to buy another one, when you can simply have the last appliance you'd ever need. And then, of course, we have, so we have um, one U units up to nine U, really just depends on how many terabytes uh, you have and how much you need to protect. You can recover all your servers and applications in your seconds. And um, of course, you can also, that, that cloud storage, you have the ability to use our cloud, your cloud, or any cloud. Now, let's take a look then at um, pricing. Now, I want to just be clear that the pricing really just depends on how much data you have. That's it. It's simply how much data is protected. So it's not going to increase um, based on how much support you need, how many recoveries you perform, the tests that you run. It's not going to increase based on any type of uh, professional fees or services. Everything is included in our cost. It's simply a, a, a price of how much data do you have to protect. So with that in mind, this comparison we did with a couple of um, of other solutions out there. So we looked at Barracuda, Unitrends, Datto, and Infrascale. So this was a apples to apples comparison. We did a 10 terabyte appliance with three years of cloud storage um, bolted on there. So this is the comparison that we did and the Infrascale solution, again, it was apples to apples, 70% less than the others out there. And again, we did Barracuda, Unitrends, and Datto like you see here. So it's simply just going to depend on how much data you have to protect. And um, with that in mind, let's look at this competitive comparison. Um, now we, we look at some of the similar companies. We added in Axiant and then um, Data Barracuda and Unitrends. So we're looking at, you know, is it an affordable solution? Does it offer cloud spillover? Does it offer complete coverage? Do you get push button failover? Is, is it secure? What about data encryption? And what's the recovery time like? So this is the comparison of you know, all of the do's that we just looked at when it came to do's and don'ts of DR. And then at the very bottom, we have the three-year cost. So the cost that we just looked at on the last page, and we see that Infrascale is the most cost-effective across the board. Again, I'm happy to share the specifics of this with you. I'm happy to share the, the the, uh, the numbers on the competitive comparison because I really want you to be able to have a solution that's affordable for your business. Okay, um, now that we've kind of looked at all of the details with that we've seen so far, this is, this is just a really quick glance at the Infrascale dashboard. It's just a snapshot um, that really shows you we provide a unified management console Everything in the dashboard um, that you can access is simply from any browser. You can log in on a mobile device, you can log in on a tablet or smartphone, and you have access right there to view activity alerts, you have access to reporting and monitoring, you can monitor all of your account usage, uh, manage any of the retention settings in there for compliance requirements, 
And then you can also control remote deployment and um, use our MSI to deploy anywhere in the world as well. All right. Now we're wrapping up here, sort of coming towards um, towards the end of the presentation. We've got about 15 minutes left, so I do want to just wrap up with a little bit about what makes InfraScale unique. And don't forget to ask uh, lots of questions. Get your questions in now. We're going to jump to the Q&A next. And as a reminder, we are doing a prize giveaway. Um, we're going to randomly select one person to win an Xbox One. Um, whoever asks the most uh, you know, relevant and on-topic questions, so definitely get lots of questions in there. Um, so really quickly, as sort of a recap on uh, the key benefits that we talked about so far, um, breakthrough pricing, cloud spillover, push button failover, and complete coverage. So just to touch on that, um, our DRAD solutions are as much as 70% less compared to traditional failover solutions. Um, we allow you to store an unlimited amount of data in the cloud. It's regardless of the size of your physical appliance. And then, unlike other solutions, we protect mixed environments, including over 100 versions of the most popular operating system. And then, just not to mention, we already looked at security, our end-to-end -end encryption process. Our project is really simple to deploy and to use. Um, we offer sales training for, um, for your team as well. We're very flexible. And um, we allow you to deploy how and where you want to deploy. But you don't need to just take my word for it. You, um, you can see here, uh, just like I mentioned earlier, um, we were Gartner Cool Vendor in Business Continuity and Disaster Recovery. We also have been recognized by Storage Switzerland and ZDNet as well. So you don't have to just take my word for it. You can see the recognition that we've received. And then with the next steps, before we dive into Q&A, I just want to make everyone aware that I, in, for joining us today on this presentation, I'd love to offer everyone a free CFA evaluation unit. So um, you can simply type into the question tool. Actually, don't, you don't even need to bother with this email or phone number, but just type right into the question tool and let me know. Say. Um, Give me your, your name and your either your email address or your phone number, whatever is the best way to reach you, and I will get you um, set up with a free CFA eval um, this week, and I'll get, um, I'll get you hooked up with uh, someone who will send that out to you. So um, let's see. Uh, Armando typed in his name. Armando, um, what phone number or email would you like? us to use. Um, Mike said very interested, included his email, which is great. Um, let's see, uh, Kelly says, are your data center facilities global? Do you have presence outside the U.S., i.e. Brazil? Yes, we do. And, um, and I'll also talk more about our data center facilities. Um, they're all Tier 3 and Tier 4. Um, U.S. military-grade facilities. We have 16 global data centers. We have several uh, throughout the U.S. Um, we have, let's see, uh, Houston, Johannesburg, um, London, uh, Melbourne. Uh, we have uh, Toronto. And let me just pull the list up as well because I'm just sort of spouting off all the names that I'm, all the cities that I'm remembering offhand, but we've got 16 uh, various locations. Um, let's see, and then uh, more questions on data centers. Okay, well, let's definitely talk about that. Let me pull up the map to show everyone where all the data centers are located as well. Um, and so with that, I see lots of questions coming through. So, so definitely keep, um, keep sending through your phone number or your email if you want one of these um, free CFA eval units. But um, let's go ahead and then dive into the Q&A. So, um, just as sort of a wrap up, we'll, we'll jump into the Q&A now. Again, here's my contact information. What I'm going to do is drop a copy of this presentation into the handout section now so that everyone can grab a copy of that. Um, and then I do have one last poll. So I am going to launch one last poll, which I'd love to hear from you on. And I'm going to just launch that while I um, go through this Q&A. So let me just scroll back up to the top of the Q&A and make sure that I get as many questions answered as possible in these last um, five, ten minutes here. 
So let me just get that pulled up. Okay, so what I'll do is um, leave this poll up for just a few minutes while I answer some of these questions, and then um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the results of the poll. Okay, um, so first question says, um, can you give a quick overview of the company history and customers? So that's um, a great question. Infraskill, we were founded um, in 2011. We're headquartered in Los Angeles. We are a venture-backed company. We have uh, 150 employees worldwide. And um, we have over 1,000 MSP partners across the globe. In turn, our partners are protecting millions of endpoints and devices and about 20 billion data objects in our global grid. Um, so we'd love to, <laughs> and then someone says, are you hiring? <laughs> uh, well, yes, we are. Um, so yeah, reach out to uh, the infrascale.com slash careers page as uh, has all of our job openings. Um, and then, the next question says, you didn't share specific costs. What's the pricing model? Um, so yeah, that's true. I didn't, I didn't have uh, specifics because it is just based on um, the amount of data that you are protecting. Now, pricing can start at just a few hundred dollars. Um, if you're using, uh, say, just cloud storage or appliances, then like you saw, we have um, the one new units up to the nine new units. So, it can range from just a couple of terabytes up to hundreds of terabytes. So, um, you know, you can scale up very easily, but maybe be a little bit more specific with letting me know um, what your needs might be, and I can try to answer that uh, uh, better. Okay, um, the next question says, what changes regarding cost if a backup server needs to be spun up? Are there costs associated with sp spinning up in the cloud? So no, no additional cost. It's all included in the pricing. It's, uh, again, simply by the amount of data protected, not by the amount of recoveries. Are there any outage costs? I'm sorry, are there any overage costs in the cloud as limits are met? What if I go over capacity? Is my data not backed up? So if you go over capacity, we will contact you to let you know you need more space. You're also going to be receiving warnings as you get close to capacity, but we are never going to leave you hanging without scheduled backups, so your data is still protected. <clears throat> the appliance can support 100 different operating systems. What does it not support? Yes, we, so we support Windows, Mac, and uh, many others. We, we support all versions of Windows, all versions of Linux, Unix, OpenServer, Novell Netware, Solaris, HP UX, AIX, and um, we have bare metal bootable for Windows, and then we have bare metal bootable for Linux coming uh, this quarter, next quarter, so coming soon. Okay, is the backup real time, or can we determine the frequency of when each server is backed up slash snapshotted? So the, the protection policies are fully configurable. So you will set it uh, to protect every 15 minutes, every 24 hours, whatever it is that you'd like. Okay, uh, next question says, uh, we're a partner looking to add DRAZ to our clients. Um, okay, there, that is wonderful to hear. Is, is there a specific question that I could answer for you um, in how to get you up and running doing that? Okay, uh, next question says, can we install multiple units in different data centers? Yes, you can. You, can, uh, you will be able to select where your data lives. Um, you can select one of our, of our global data centers. Um, if you have your own infrastructure and wanted to run a private cloud, you can do so as well. We also support um, Amazon Web Services and Windows Azure if you'd like third-party cloud. Okay, um, let's see, I, I guess this is a comment here. We're currently using online backup, but we need failover to cover business operations for clients. Um, yes, you definitely do. Backup does not equal um, disaster recovery, and you really want a uh, DRAZ solution so that you can failover seamlessly. Okay, next question um, says, how do you stay competitive at 70% less than competitors? 
is your cloud AWS based? Um, no, so we we have our um, our data centers are the reason that we can stay so low is because we're 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 using smart technology. So we're using the cloud effectively and efficiently rather than using uh, hardware. We also have a proprietary deduplication system built right in. We have WAN acceleration built right in. And so all of these factors really help us keep the cost low. Um, Donnie then says, what's the, uh, what's the implementation time to get set up? Um, Donnie, I actually don't have a very specific great answer for you on that, so I'm going to talk to one of our sales engineers and I will get back to you um, with, a, with an answer because I don't want to tell you something that's incorrect. Um, next question says, uh, do you leverage data dedupe, and what sort of dedupe efficiency do you get? So, we do. We have we have an up to 90% deduplication rate. Of course, it depends on the types of data and files um, that that you're protecting, but we do have a very powerful deduplication technology built in. So that kind of coincides. That goes right back to the last question about um, you know how are we that much uh, less in cost? And it's really because we're de we're we're deduplicating that data, you're not paying additional costs for uh, protection of the same data over and over. So I hope that helps. Okay, um, are there minimum bandwidth requirements? So we, uh, we just require at least a one megabit connection. Um, now, because you're buffering on the appliance, the amount of dedicated bandwidth that you need to the cloud is far less than you'd assume. Um, I just mentioned also as well the 90% deduplication rate. So with that built in, um, our appliance is going to allow you to, to throttle based off of speed. So, so you can set the speed and specific time frames. And because you have the, those throttling capabilities, you can trickle the data if need be as well. So your bandwidth doesn't really matter. Um, you have the local data stored on the appliance, and you can then push up to the cloud on your schedule. Okay, great question here says, what is your support like? Do you offer 24 by 7 support? Yes, we do. We offer 24 by 7 support 365 days a year. We have half, it's a US-based support team. Half are here in Los Angeles, half are in Salt Lake City. Um, we offer email, live chat, ticketing, and a knowledge base. We also have a phone line with a one-hour SLA. So regardless of time, day or night, you'll be able to get support. Uh, I see another question here on, on the data centers and where they're located. So I'll just um, quickly touch on that again. We've got 16 global points of presence. Our data centers are located throughout the US, Canada, the UK, Australia, South Africa, and South America. They're all tier three and tier four data centers. So we ha they have biometric credential requirements, uh, redundant um, cooling systems, redundant replication, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I, I see another question as well about um, are we SOX compliant? So uh, PCI compliance came up earlier. If there are any other compliance questions, definitely let me know. Um, we sign business associate agreements and uh, we take security very seriously. All of our data centers comply with um, HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, PCI, Safe Harbor, SAS 70, CGIS, uh, SSA 16, and many other regulations as well. Um, the data is encrypted at a 256-bit AES locally. It's sent over an SSL, and then it's encrypted again at 256-bit AES. If you want to take it a step further, also with UltraSafe Max, you not only define the password, but you can define the encryption key itself. All right, next question. Uh, now I'm now I'm at the point where I see lots of email addresses and phone numbers uh, coming through when we when I offered the free cloud failover appliance. Okay, so let me scroll through these. Okay, let's see here. Do you, do you have the option to select multiple sites to recover to? 
slash availability zones. Thomas, I believe so because you do have the option of where you are backing up to, and so you do have the option of where you recover to. However, let me get a more specific, and let me just get a better answer from an SE. Again, trying to answer all of the questions that I can, but I don't want to give anyone any incorrect information, so let me get more specifics on that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> All right, um, let's see. Next question says, my problem is that the computer itself was stolen. I had a Windows image backup, but I can't restore it to a new computer. Can you do that? So yes, we can. That's bare metal recovery to dissimilar hardware. We do support that. Let's see, is this compatible with my WAN accelerator slash steelhead? So when you're looking at WAN acceleration, um, yes, we use we use both WAN acceleration and over-the-wire deduplication. Those technologies are built in with data compression built into the solution. So some solutions are going to require that you buy a WAN acceleration system, but we've already built that right in. So no additional costs. Um, and that really allows us to dramatically reduce the data payload that gets pushed over the wire and also re dramatically reduce the cost. Okay, um, is InfraScale agent-based or does it communicate with the hypervisor? Do I have to install agents on devices and servers? So for the question of agent-based or agentless, we support both. What we recommend is that within the data center, you use the agentless approach and you connect directly to the hypervisor. But for something like, say, a Unix server or Linux uh, running on metal, then we have agents there. OK, next question says, data doesn't let me back up laptops, particularly roaming laptops. Can you do that? So yes, we can. We have endpoint protection for individual mobile clients so that you can install an agent and they'll back up just fine. We also include geolocate and remote wipe of endpoints as well. So definitely don't forget about accessibility and recovery to data from mobile devices. Um, with Androids, we offer an incredibly powerful backup application. It runs on a schedule. It backs up everything on the, the device. Um, it offers robust data compression. And then iPhone access includes backup for videos, photos, contacts. So it's, it really is a tr truly powerful uh, data recovery tool there. All right, uh, let's see, next question. Before trying your equipment, I, will, I would like to discuss this more, no problem. I will have a colleague reach out to you to talk about more specifics. Let's see, I'd like to be considered for an eval, great. I have your information. We'll send that out to you, and I will follow up with those of you who want the eval uh, this week. Uh, we just had the debate that backup is not DR. Amazing how many people think that backups are DR. Yeah, we should probably, uh, maybe we'll make that our next uh, white paper in a blog post on how backup is not disaster recovery. Um, it used to be uh, sync. Everyone not everyone, but uh, a common question used to be, well, I have a sync and share set up, so I think I'm backed up. But the problem there is if you delete the sync in the cloud, you've also deleted it from your machine. Uh, let's see, dedupe. Uh, but there's no question next to it. Was there a question? another question about dedupe? Um, OK, let's see. Um, outstanding support, been a client for years. Okay, um, that is wonderful, Linda. So, Linda, you are a current customer of ours, and uh, what do you have any other feedback? Um, the, I do see the feedback, outstanding support, been a client for years. When will the handout be available? So, um, yeah, I'll be able to share a copy of this presentation with everyone. I'll do that now. And, um, Linda, do you have any other feedback that you'd like to share with the group? No, uh, I see another comment that says, um, no questions, it was an aha moment. <laughs> and then I see, wow, endpoint backup to nice. Yeah, um, the, the endpoint, so with, with geolocate and remote wipe, 
um, that is very powerful. You know, if you, for example, have a, you know, you have an employee or you have a customer who just has, you know, turnover can sometimes be inevitable for a company if you have a disgruntled employee who has critical data on that um, device, you really want to be able to manage and monitor that and you want to be able to remotely wipe it if need be. Okay, let me go ahead and add this um, at the file here. Okay, and then it looks like we there, there aren't too many oh, there aren't too many questions coming through, and I've already gone over on time. So I apologize for going over on time. If you do need to drop off, no problem. And with that in mind, I do need to sort these questions. Um, so keep an eye out for your email. I will email uh, the person today who has won the Xbox One. I need to sort these questions. See who asked the most questions today. And I apologize that I went over on time, but I really, really appreciate everyone who uh, who stayed and who's still on the line. So let me be respectful of that, and I'll go ahead and say um, and say again, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you being here. Please uh, keep an eye out for your email, since I will send out a copy of this presentation, the recording video, and let you guys know who won the Xbox One. So thanks again. I really look forward to working with everyone in the future, and have a great day.